and welcome back to the channel as we put the spotlight on part two of television production. And in this one I'm going to answer, what do I do in the development phase as a producer? Well, you see, it takes time to nurture a product from the seed of an idea to the start of production. That time could be, well in real, reality it could be years. In the film industry and television industry, this period is known as the development and is frequently described as hell. The development period can be unpredictable, it can be frustrating, but you've got to keep calm because things will definitely go all or go very wrong for all kinds of reasons. During this time, it's the producer's job to keep the ship on course and keep the goal making the film in everyone's mind. Along the way, there'll be many icebergs and it will be your job to navigate the course through these. Let's talk about how producers find projects. Well, every great drama documentary starts, of course, with a good story. As a producer, uh, stories will come to you from many different sources. And part of your job is to sit through them and make decisions about which ones you'll pursue and develop and which ones to pass on. Producers tend to start looking for a project by meeting writers and talking to them. As a creative producer, your most important asset is a good relationship with talented writers and the trust and respect of the agents. Writers' agents are powerful people and can strongly influence their clients' choices. Over time, producers develop relationships with writers and their agents. Sometimes these may be formalised into what's known as a first look deal, when all the writers um, are obliged to offer all their new ideas and projects to that producer. Um, and, and they do this generally before shopping them around into the open market. But in most cases, there's a more informal arrangement between friends and colleagues. A writer whose last film, uh, or, or TV series for that matter, was a success and happily delivered by a particular producer may very well choose to take his or her next project to the same company. Equally, a writer who is disappointed by the final programme may choose never to work with a producer or a production company again. Many producers start a career path um, in the industry working as uh, script readers, uh, script editors and development producers and this gives them a sort of head start in knowing what writers to work with. Let's start by assuming that you the producer have read something in print which you think could be the basis of a really good drama. The first thing you have to do is find out if the material is still in copyright or not and if it is who owns the copyright? Now the area of copyright, everyone thinks they know. But here are the facts for all literary, literary, drama, musical or artistic works. The length of the copyright is 70 years after the death of the author or the longest living uh, person if the copyright is shared. To be more precise, it's actually 70 years from the end of the calendar year in which the last surviving author of the work died. But if the work was published posthumously, um, then it will be about 70 years after the publication. For films, copyright expires 70 years after the end of the calendar year um, that the last principal director, author or composer who is credited as, a, as the creator of the work dies. Okay, the length of the copyright may be different for other forms of work. For example, some photographs, magazines, musical scores may only be in copyright for about 50 years. So it's important to check precisely before assuming the copyright has expired. Infringement of copyright is serious and authors have every right to seek redress from the production companies and producers if they think it has occurred. Um, there's a thing called the fair use or concept of fair use um, that refers to limited and clearly defined circumstances when copyright material may be used without obtaining permission of the original authors. Unfortunately, there's no statutory definition of what exactly constitutes fair use, but fair use may apply in the following circumstances. If the work is being used solely for private study, educational or research purposes, for 
criticism or critique, review and news reporting, formal shifting or backup of the work for your own personal use, time shifting, in other words, uh, recording of broadcasts for the purposes of listening to or viewing at a more convenient time. Think about something like the iPlayer. Um, caricature or parody or pastiche, meaning that it might be okay to use someone's material provided um, they use it in a way that is clearly a satirical, uh, funny, artistic purpose, that sort of thing. Once you've got all the copyright business out of the way, the normal procedure um, is to acquire an option. Now, acquiring an option uh, over a literary work effectively grants you, the producer, the exclusive rights to develop a project for the screen based for that work. Now, the option means that you are the only person or company who has the right to develop the work into television drama or film for at least as long as you hold the rights. An option enables you to minimise the development costs because you don't have to pay the full price of the work until you exercise the option, which is usually later, or normally it's on the first day of principal photography. Um, it also means you don't waste time or money developing a project only to find out later that you don't have the right to make it. Normally the first option period will be for about a year from signature of the option agreement so you may be able to persuade the author uh, or their agent to agree to grant you an option for 18 months trying to get the longest period you can as we have established development can take a long time. The option agreement must set out clearly exactly what rights are being acquired by the producer as a minimum you'll want to write to adapt the work for film and television, online streaming, because at this moment you don't know exactly where your project's going to end up and this will probably be described in the agreement as uh, the right to exploit the work by all audiovisual media, which covers you in any event you should specify that you have acquired these rights in perpetuity forever. You will also want to acquire the right to uh, commission and authorise adaptations in the form of synopsis, treatments uh, and scripts based on the work. Without this clause, you can't ask the writer uh, to start working on the adaptation. You will need the right to submit the script uh, or treatment to third parties. You may wish to specify um, and, 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 you know, negotiate something in the agreement relating to sequels, spin-offs, remixes or other future works featuring the same characters. You need to specify which other rights are included in the final purchase price. Things like, you know, if you want to make a computer game of it, for example. When you've done all of this, you'll get to the next phase, which is um, the commissioning the project. Uh, and some of these are industry long held secrets and they're all to be revealed in our next video. Thank you for joining me on Spotlight. See you in part three.